So here we've got a directional movement for a character, but we've also added in having the turret look towards the mouse cursor. You could also like, add on some general shooting, so when you press like your mouse spacebar or left the mouse button, it fires a projectile in that direction. But that's beyond this little tutorial. So this example is going to take our existing directional movement and add a turret onto this that we can then control with the mouse. And so the turret will look independently of the direction the player character is moving. And then the third video, we'll sort of look at how to take this into a twin stick shooter option. We don't always combine having the twin stick and the mouse in one, just because obviously if the mouse is here and you're using the twin stick controls, the mouse is going to override it, so we need a way to toggle between them. But we're going to split that up into two different videos. So let's first have a look at how to handle getting the mouse position. So, first up, we need to basically go and have a turret. So I'm just going to add onto my player. I'm going to add a child node. I'm just going to add a marker 3D, and I'm going to rename that called turret, because this is what we're going to actually spin around. On that, I'm just going to add on some objects. I don't actually want a CSG box. I'm just going to use a CSG sphere on this one. I'll just drag it up a little bit. It will make it a little bit smaller. Because essentially I'm going to just have this sort of spin around as a turret. And as a child of that, I'm just going to throw in a CSG cylinder. Point two, and we'll make it say one meter long. Actually, let's make that point one. And we're going to pin it, pull this up. And essentially, I just want to position that. Let's just do the transforms. Yeah, that's actually correct. Just position it so it's inside our character. So we're starting to look a little bit tanky. No, the default options are not giving me quite enough granularity, so I'm just going to change that to a 0.25 increase, and now we've got a nice little gun on top. I could go and add a material to it, but in this case, actually having the white is quite nice. And as we can see at the moment, when I run it, because it is separate to the body, it behaves independently, so it's not actually doing anything. But because it's a child of the player which I'm moving, it moves around with it really nice. But now we actually need to go and write some code to get this to go and move. Now, where we want to jump to is we're going to have to handle our input somewhere. Now, in order for that, I am actually just, I could write this all part of my main process, but I'm just going to make a function called Look at cursor, and in here we're going to have all that code. So what I'm going to do is create what's called a plane that I'm going to basically interact with. So if we look on the game in 3D mode, essentially what I want to do is basically look down top and basically just draw like a flat sheet of see-through paper through there, so I can just work out what direction my character is my mouse is. So if my mouse is here, I'm going to get you know about 45 degrees, 90, and so on. So let's set up that variable. I'm just going to call it uh, target plane mouse because that's what we're hitting, and we're going to create a new plane, which is going to be a vector 3 
at zero, one, so basically it's around the one axis, and and at the y axis of wherever this is. Now I want to get a ray length. So I'm going to make a variable called the ray length. I'm just going to set that to a thousand. It can be a lot shorter. This is basically how far from wherever the camera is. So we'll jump onto the player in 3D view. So we've got a player camera that basically casts a ray from here until it intersects that plane that gets drawn. And then it works out that position between there and the character. That's basically what's going to have, be going on. I need to get the mask position. P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. So we can get the viewport, which is basically what's being shown on the screen. And that has a function called get mouse position. So it gets the X and Y coordinates. And we're going to have a few variables. So we're going to have one called from. Two. So this is the position we're projecting from. In this, we're going to go from the camera. We're going to tell the camera to project array origin, and its origin is going to be our mouse position. Having some trouble spelling today. And we were going to go to basically take a position from the mouse position and add on the camera 3D. We're going to project array normal. from the mouse position and times it by the ray length. Now we need to work out the cursor position. So this is basically going to get our cursor position on the screen. That's going to get our target plane. Where it intersects the ray, going from that starting point to the other starting point. So that two is getting basically the x, one, z location of where we're going to, the point where we want to finish up. Point we start. This goes and draws the line and checks where it cuts through that plane. And that gets the cursor position, not so much on the screen, let's actually change the name of that. The cursor position on the plane. And what we then need to do is go and get our turret to look at it. So what we're going to do is get our turret use the look at function and we're going to look at the cursor position on the plane and we're going to lock it in vector 3 dot up so it basically stays locked on that main axis and let's go and test this It's not working. That's because we haven't actually told it to go and run at any stage. So we've got a physics process where everything's sort of happening. I don't really want to interact with the physics, so this is not really changing our physics. So we're just going to use this in the normal process function, and we're just going to run the look at cursor, and that should get us a relatively real time. Actor that's moving, 
we want to make that actually look a bit cooler, what we could do, jump onto here, let's add a child node, actually no, let's add it to the cylinder, and we're going to just add another spotlight onto this, it's facing the right way. Let's give this one a really long range at a really narrow angle. We'll give it a bit of purple and crank its power right up. So you can see its light is quite powerful and it works independently of the other shapes. So we've now got our character with its faces the direction we want to look and we can move independently so we've got the makings of a sort of top down shooter next part we'll look at how to rather than having the mouse get it using sort of twin stick controls and obviously you could add any other sort of projectile shooting or raycast shooting from this and apply that as well